Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am very excited to continue a new mini-series on old topics. That is, conference papers that I gave some time ago. Why would you want something old? My first answer is that it is still timely today. In other words, the essentials have remained unchanged. My second answer is that YouTube is free. If you want more current or more complete information, you would need to buy one of my books or attend my two-day winding school. This particular presentation is something of a synopsis of the first and third clip in this series. It is an amalgamation of modeling, measurement, and troubleshooting. As a newly minted consultant, this was one of my first forays in trying to teach the art of troubleshooting. In the next few minutes, we will discuss a few of the many tools that can be used for the design of wound rolls. The purpose is merely an introduction to the tools rather than detailed com coverage. Thus, it is important to design wound rolls to maximize product quality and process efficiency. Unfortunately, the process of winding may sometimes damage the material. And at other times, the winder may be wrongfully attributed to a problem whose cause lies elsewhere. With the science of winding, we can determine the boundaries of winding operation defined by either physical laws or the limitations of material or machine. Within these bounds of material, machine, and physics, we are free to design the wound roll for maximum quality. This includes reducing or eliminating roll defects such as crushed cores, offsets, and telescopes, as well as to reduce product damage such as breaks in the material and loss of bulk due to winding at excessive tension. The goal is to wind a cylindrical roll to a specified length and diameter and width. Also, the wind must be sufficiently hard to withstand subsequent loads during transport handling, but not so hard as to damage the material. While there are many tools available for the design of wound rolls, they may be classified in three broad categories. The first and most commonly used is the subjective diagnosis of problems and solutions using previous experience or trial and error. However, we will be focusing on more quantitative methods, such as the experimental measurement of wound rolls. The usage of the measurements varies considerably between mills from never at all to occasional tuning of a winder to periodic spot checks, to quality control rejection criteria. However, as we will see shortly, the mathematics and physics of winding has been derived and solved. This allows many wound roll analysis to be performed on a computer without resorting to measurements on a pilot or production trials. The first measurements of wound rolls were made by striking the rolls with a billy club and noting their hardness. The tightness of the wind was related to and gauged by the hardness of the impact. This impact hardness of rolls can be quantified by instruments such as the Beloit roll meter and Schmidt hammer. The next category of wound roll measurements is the quantification of inner layer pressure by the friction measurement, such as core torque, pull tab, and Smith needle. Similarly, machine direction strain can be measured using the Cameron Gap and J-Line tests. Finally, there are more sophisticated measurement systems, such as the computerized density analyzer and special purpose lab winders. While there are many measurement systems, we will discuss only the more widely used. The row meter is a handheld impactor measuring the peak deceleration of a small hammer striking the rewound roll. Though similar in principle to the billy club, it has the distinct advantage of being able to quantify roll structure. 
quality control requires numerical measurements of relevant variables. The roll meter is especially useful for profiling across the width of the roll to diagnose base sheet cross-direction profile problems. The Smith needle can infer interlayer pressure at any radius at the roll ends by measuring the insertion force required to penetrate a needle between two adjacent layers. The Smith needle, while useful for profiling through the radius to help tune winding programs, may yield ambiguous results and the needle can damage the edges of the web. The Cameron Gap Test, which is a TAPI standard test method, measures the machine direction strain on the outer layer of a roll. This simple test requires only a knife and a scale or 10 times magnifier with reticle to measure the gap and a tape measure to measure roll diameter. However, it only yields a single value, which is the average stress across the width of the roll's outer diameter. Consequently, it gives no profiling information about the roll beneath the outer layers unless the roll is slapped down and more measurements made. The density analyzer is a recent innovation in roll structure measurement. This computer-based instrument has at least two encoders that are attached to the core and a roller or a drum which travels at web speed. The pulse output from these encoders are counted by counter boards which interface to a computer. The counts are then used to calculate the density of the outer layers during winding or unwinding. Any sufficiently large increase in winding tension or stress will result in increased density readings. The density analyzer is one of the truly modern and automated test methods for roll structure analysis. With so many methods available, we would like to evaluate each to find the best for our particular finishing room situation. Evaluation begins by checking each me method against several important measurement criteria. These criteria include the ability to profile a roll either across the width or through the diameter, the accuracy of the measurement, the ability to record data, whether it is directly related to stress or strain, whether it's non-destructive, how easy is it to use, and the costs of operation. As seen here, the satisfaction of the measurement criteria varies considerably among the measurement options. In general, the impact measurements do quite well for cross-machine profiling, while the others are better suited to profiling through the diameter. Unfortunately, many of the measurement systems produce data with considerable scatter, so that interpretation can be risky. The evaluation of accuracy and reproducibility is covered more thoroughly in a TAPI journal article and accompanying video. The last major consideration when choosing a measurement system is equipment and labor costs. Some of these tests can be quite involved, while others such as the density analyzer can be easily hooked up on most winders and run automatically without much tending. While measurement systems are more commonly used, analytical models can often give more detailed information with less effort. These winding models have evolved in the past three decades through the efforts of many scientists in industry and university. Today, models can often give more accurate results than measurements. These models are based on the deterministic and inviolate laws of physics. The first component of winding models is equilibrium, which simply means that forces on all wraps are balanced. The next component of winding models is the stress, a strain displacement relationship, which simply means that there are no voids or overlaps between layers of the roll. Finally, the stress-strain relations, which account for anisotropic material stiffness. 
These ingredients are combined to form a second order differential equation which requires two known boundary conditions. The first is the stiffness of the core, and the second is an all-important winding tension. These ingredients are coded into a computer program which solves the equation for the building of every wrap of a roll from the core to the finished diameter. To run a winding model, one needs to know both material property and winding condition inputs. The material properties include the modulus or stiffness of the material in the machine direction and in the Z direction as a stack. Winding condition inputs include the inner and outer roll diameter as well as winding tension. The outputs of conventional winding models include radial and tangential stresses at any radius. Radial stresses are the inner layer pressure which acts in the Z direction of the web. Tangential stresses are the tension or compression acting in the machine direction of the web. These stresses are compared to various failure criteria to determine if problems might occur. As seen here during the building of a roll, the radial stress profile has three regions. The regions are the inner and outer gradients and a near level interior. The radial stresses decrease to zero on the outside of the roll. Thus, if the material is subject to bulk loss, the inviolate laws of physics tells us that this law will, loss will not be uniform through the roll. As seen here, the tangential stress profile also has three regions. The tensile stress at the outside of the roll is equal to the wound-in tension divided by caliper. The tangential stress at the, in the interior of the roll, though small, may be either tensile or compressive. Is if the interior is too compressive, buckling and starring might occur. Though we have covered many wound roll topics in the past few minutes, the single point to remember is that winding is a design science. These topic areas are so important that I return to them again and again in my career. The first two times were as chapters in two of my books. My Winding Machines, Mechanics, and Measurement book, co-authored with Dr. Good of the Web Handling Research Center, gives hundreds of pages of details on roll mechanics and measurements. I also teach many modules on the topic in my advanced two-day winding class. The troubleshooting just hinted at here eventually becomes two books, a course, and uncountable other smaller mentions. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned as we move on to more advanced web handling topics. Let me know if there's something that you would especially want to hear about. Be sure to like and share. See you next time.